this example natin for uh, relative equilibrium for vertical motion or movement of containers with uh, liquids uh, vertically. So you have an open vessel 8 feet in diameter containing 6 uh, feet of water is being uh, raised. So first requirement, sabihin mo na lang letter A. So for letter A, determine the pressure at the bottom in pounds per square foot when the velocity is uh, constant. So let's say we have the velocity is uh, given as constant. Then second, we have determine the pressure at the bottom in pounds per square foot when it is accelerating upwards, accelerating at 2 feet per second straight. So the second requirement is we have the acceleration that is we have 2 feet per uh, second squared. So, hinahanap natin dito, we are looking for the magnitude of this, at, uh, of the pressure at the bottom of the tank, and this given condition, letter A, acceleration up. Velocity is constant, then acceleration is equal to 2 feet per uh, second squared. So, let us recall how to determine the magnitude of the pressure of a specific point considering that your container is moving upward or downward. So, the pressure is equal to, we have gamma H, this is multiplied by 1 plus or minus the given acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So, again, if the motion is upward, this is addition. If the motion is downward, subtraction. So, we have first letter A, the velocity is constant. Okay, so if the velocity of a moving body is constant, it only means that its acceleration is a zero. You may recall this in your uh, physics. So if the velocity of a body is constant, therefore its acceleration is a zero. So we have, okay, according to the problem, the motion of this tank is, it is being raised upward. So we are using the pressure is equal to gamma h. The motion is upward, 1 plus the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. But if the velocity is constant, acceleration is zero, this term is the same as zero. So if the acceleration is zero, how to compute for pressure for a moving containers with liquid is simply gamma h. Yeah. The ordinary way how to compute uh, pressure. So we have this is. We have the pressure, so take that this is in English, the height of the liquid is 6 uh, feet, or this is water. So gamma water, gamma water in uh, English is 62 point, uh, this is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Then multiplied by the height of the liquid, this is, we have 6, or uh, this is 6 feet. Canceling feet and feet cube, so the pressure at the bottom of the tank will be equal to I said this is 62.4 multiplied by 62.4 by 6. And we have this equal to 374.4. So the remaining units is we have the pounds per. So this is the same as a pounds per square foot. Or the same as the required unit. Yes. Uh, that is for the first requirement. Take note, if we have the acceleration is zero, how to compete for pressure? That is the same as gamma h. Then we have for the second one. I uh, said so this is letter B. So for letter B, we have a given acceleration. The acceleration is equal to 2 uh, feet per second squared, this is the same as upward. So we have the pressure is equal to gamma h multiplied by 1 plus the acceleration divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So you have the pressure, so this is gamma water, English 62.4, this is uh, pounds per cubic foot. The height of the liquid or water is we have 6, uh, this is 6 uh, feet. This is multiplied by 1 plus the given acceleration. This is, we have 2 feet per second squared. Then divided by the acceleration due to gravity, English unit is 32.2 feet per second squared. So if we are to do unit analysis, this term will become a unit less. So we have, uh, 
Okay, let us compute the magnitude of the pressure. Alright, so we have in the magnitude of 397.655. Okay, pounds per square foot. Or the same as the PSM. Okay, so this is our example for vertical motion of containers with a liquid. How to compute for the pressure? Okay, so the next topic is uh, rotating vessel. Ito yung, uh, basically, yung rotating natin yung containers. So, ang mangyari usually is uh, aangat yung liquid. Habang nagro-rotate itong uh, container natin, okay, with aangat yung liquid sa gilid tapos yung parang gitna niya is uh, bababa so let's say uh, one example will be uh, stirring your coffee so, parang pag tip lang lang ninyo or pag stirring nyo ng kape parang lang yung nangyayari sa uh, liquid so let's say this vessel is uh, rotating at an angular velocity omega so omega yung tawag natin dito is yung tawag natin dito is the angular velocity So, pwede siya in terms of uh, revolution per minute or the RPM or revolution uh, radian per second or the RPS. So, okay. But, uh, kapag ini-steer siya, parang ang nangyayari is nagka-create tayo ng space of air dito sa loob ng container. So, what is this space of air? Uh, let's say the height of this uh, space or uh, this shape is uh, H. Tapos yung tawag natin sa shape na to, we call this one as the, oh, this is the paraboloid. Alright, so this as air is, uh, or the shape is called the uh, paraboloid. Now, how to determine the height? So this one, uh, this one requirement dito is how to determine the height of a paraboloid. So let's say this is uh, H. So again, from the same as our, from our previous discussion, we are to consider one particle of this uh, liquid. So take note, it is in a uh, rotational motion. So this liquid, okay, this particle of liquid has its own uh, weight. For example, okay, if a body is in a rotational motion, it is acted by Okay, from your P6, it is acted by the centrifugal force. So the weight, the centrifugal force, then again, they will be having their uh, corresponding uh, resultant. And their corresponding, I'll say this is the corresponding resultant. Well, let's say this is the centrifugal force, then their uh, resultant. So how to determine, uh, so we, we have to consider again this angle, let's say theta. So, uh, of this construct the force triangle so let's say this is the resultant r the weight is always downward then this is the centrifugal force theta a uh, centrifugal force cm so what is the equivalent what is the equivalent uh, let us consider this angle theta what is the equivalent of the centrifugal force from your p from your p6 so the centrifugal force from P6 is, this is the weight, the tangential velocity squared divided by the acceleration due to gravity times at the radius of rotation. So let's say x, let's say this particle is at a distance x from the axis of rotation uh, at a height of y, let's say from the x axis. So the coordinate of this point is at x and let's say y. If you have a centrifugal force, weight over the acceleration due to gravity, tangential velocity squared distance x. The equivalent of the tangential velocity is the angular velocity times x. Kung gaano man kalayo yung point na to from your axis of rotation, let's say uh, x. So if you are to substitute or if you are to consider these two forms of uh, two forces, cf and weight, the relation will be Tangent of theta is not equal to opposite centrifugal force divided by the weight. 
This is tangent of theta is equal to centrifugal force is the way tangential velocity squared divided by g times x. Okay, that is the equivalent of the centrifugal force divided by the way. So we have the equivalent of tangent theta is now equal to, we are to cancel the way. This is the same as the tangential velocity squared. Or we are to substitute what is the equivalent of tangential velocity, that is omega x squared. This is now divided by g times x. So the equivalent of tangent theta is now equal to omega squared x squared divided by x is x divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, if we are to uh, if we are to draw from this point, if we are to draw a tangent line, or this tangent line has a slope of dy over dx. The same as the inclination of this tangent line is theta. The same inclination, so we may equate that as the tangent of theta, the slope is the same as change in y over change in x is now equal to we have the angular velocity squared x divided by a g. So this is we have dy is now equal to omega squared x divided by g. Alright, uh, plus multiplication, this is dx. We are now to integrate this is from 0 to h. That will be from 0 up to the height of height of the paraboloid. Then that is also we are to integrate the other side. This is from 0 to r. So from 0 to r, the limit of the expansion of this paraboloid will be limited by the radius of the container. So yun lang yung limit niya, hindi na siya pwedeng mag-expand pa. Ang limit lang niya is yung radius or yung diameter ng container. So the integral from 0 to h of dy is y to be evaluated from 0 to h. Ito naman, we have constant omega mg, omega squared over g. The integral of x dx is x squared to be evaluated from 0 to r. So we may uh, neglect the lower limit since it is 0. So digit y by h, the height is h equal to, this is now, we have omega squared, that is again zero, we have r squared, ah, sorry, okay, sorry. See, so if we are to integrate, what is the integral of x dx, that is x squared over, over 2. So if we are to evaluate from 0 to r, again neglect the lower limit 0, so all we have to do is replace x with r. The same with this, a y replaced by h. So we have now omega squared x replaced with r, we have r squared divided by this 2g. So this is now the formula for the height of a paraboloid that is equal to the angular velocity squared, the radius of the container squared divided by twice the acceleration due to gravity.